Usually, I have to go to three or four different websites to put together a series of ideas to illustrate a point. But today, strangely, four, five actually, different articles, all on Reuters, come together to illustrate an amazing point about what I have been trying to make everyone see about Venezuela. Now, we're going to start here. This is the incoming president of Mexico talking about the new NAFTA deal that everybody is so excited about, right? Well, he says here that uh, Mexican president-elect, uh, we'll go AMLO, A-M-L-O, that's what he goes by, welcomed a deal between Mexico and the United States to overhaul, the, overhaul NAFTA that he said preserved Mexican sovereignty in the energy sector. And he said here that uh, our leader understood their position and accepted their administration's proposals. Now, this is the part that's key. This is what I want everyone to understand. We are satisfied. This is a quote of AMLO, the new coming, incoming president of Mexico. We are satisfied because our sovereignty was saved. Mexico reserves the right to reform its constitution, its energy laws, and it was established that Mexico's oil and natural resources belong to our nation. This is what got Chavez on the U.S. shit list in 2000. And if you don't think so, I'm going to continue reading and show you exactly what the difference is, which is absolutely nothing. Here he talks about working alongside private industry and coordinating with private companies. Here it says, Mexico has already awarded more than 100 oil exploration and production contracts to private companies. Lopez Obrador has said that he would pour resources into the state oil company, Pemex. This is Mexico's version of PDVSA, the state-run oil company of Venezuela. While still respecting private sector contracts, as long as review does not find evidence of corruption, meaning that if they do find evidence of corruption, the contracts go to hell. Just like was found in Venezuela with Petavesa and all of the big oil cronies that had gotten into that company. See, a lot of people don't know this. Pemex has been nationalized since 1938. We get a huge chunk of our oil from Mexico. And this new leader that won by a landslide on this exact topic in the new deal with NAFTA has pretty much just laid out something that Chavez would have loved and insisted on, and the current leader of that country has been insisting on that, yeah, it's our resources, we'll work with companies, but if we find that they are playing games and they're screwing around with the numbers and there's corruption, we're going to rip up the contracts and we're going to take it for ourselves, just like they did. This is exactly what this guy has just said. Now, as far as addressing the whole socialism thing, this was to address the corruption part. Look at this. U.S. says, and this is Reuters again, U.S. says China's steel wheels subsidized will impose duties on imports. In the exact same literal moment, they also announced that they're going to pay $4.7 billion in tariff-related aid to farmers. This is subsidizing business. This is on top of the subsidies that already exist. The USDA said on Monday its $12 billion farm aid, $12 billion farm aid package would include $4.7 billion in direct payments to farmers to help offset losses from retaliatory tariffs on American exports this season. One of the most heavily subsidized sectors of the U.S. economy now just got even more socialized. Because that's what socialism is. When government decides to take taxpayer money and hand it out to businesses so that they can compete better or they can make more money, the prices you see of everything out there that is related to farming when you go to the grocery store would be a hell of a lot higher without this. Sorry about that. 
China has traditionally bought about 60% of U.S. soybean exports, but has been largely out of the market since implementing tariffs on U.S. imports in retaliation for the Trump administration's tariffs on Chinese goods. 86 cents per bushel times one half on sorghum, one cent on corn, 14 cents on wheat, six cents on cotton, eight dollars a pig, 125 grand per person, and perhaps a second round of payments already. And then on top of that, they're going to, the U.S. government itself is going to purchase 1.2 billion dollars worth with your money. I don't want to hear boo about socialism ever again with this issue with Venezuela. Ever. Because this is exactly what... It's almost like Bizarro World, really. To see the U.S. and its oil subsidies and its farm subsidies complain and whine and moan about socialism in the tiny little country of Venezuela that doesn't even have as many people as the state of California and has one export and is literally doing the exact same thing that the U.S. just signed an agreement with Mexico to do. And oh, by the way, all that wonderful fracking and all those new finds and everywhere and the Permian, yep, the people of India are incredibly excited, the people of China are incredibly excited, because it's going to come right out of the ground and go right on ships and right overseas, and the price of oil and the price of gas in this country is going to continue to skyrocket. And as oil goes up and up and up and up and up, the U.S. dollar, of course, craters. As people sell it. Making it worth less and less and less and less and less. The dollar dropped because of this. The dollar fell to a four-week low on Monday as risk appetite improved, and investors unwound some safe haven bets on the currency after the United States and Mexico reached a trade deal. So when you go to the store and you realize that uh, you're at the end of your shopping list, or you should say you're at the end of the money, but you're not at the end of your shopping list yet, this is what is going to be the driving force. The U.S. is going to get clobbered on this. You mark my words. Now, to finish up here, this whole nationalization idea is not anything new. This guy over here is a guy named Romulo Betancourt. He was the president of Venezuela. We've been here before, but down here at the bottom, I'm going to take you someplace that's probably going to blow your mind to when he died. He was living in the United States. And he died during the Reagan administration. And I'll go ahead and read this for you. This is Ronald Reagan, speaking for a guy who nationalized the oil industry in his country and told the oil companies, it's going to be 50-50. If you make money, that's great. But if not, that's great, too. We're taking half. Ronald Reagan. I speak for all Americans in expressing our heartfelt sadness at the death of Romulo Betancourt. While he was first and foremost a Venezuelan patriot, Romulo Betancourt was an especially close friend of the United States. During the 1950s, he considered the United States a refuge while he was in exile, and we were proud to receive him. We are honored that this courageous man, whose life was dedicated to the principles of liberty and justice, a man who fought dictatorships of the right and the left, spent his final days on our shores. We join the Venezuelan people and those who love freedom around the world in mourning his death. And you can find this if you want to go ahead and, and wiki this. This is what Ronald Reagan said. You know, that horrible socialist Ronald Reagan? About Romulo Betancourt. This uh, crazy notion that the resources of a nation belong to its people. This is what they're substituting for, quote-unquote, evil socialism. They're trying to change the definitions of words around on you. So all of you out there that whenever you hear about the Permian Basin or you hear about fracking and you get so excited, you probably shouldn't get. Because according to... Um, modern 
at least the most recent incarnation of um, republicanism or conservatism or whatever the White House is calling it now. You shouldn't be entitled. You shouldn't have that thought in your head that you as an American are entitled to the benefits of the natural resources in this country only in the sense that a private business should be able to profit from it. And if a private business can't profit from it, you shouldn't expect that you should either. This is that radical idea. And I guess we'll leave with this. Government's first duty is protect the people, not run their lives. So when you're out there and you're shopping and you're buying your gasoline and you're seeing the prices go up and up and up and you're having to come home with less and less and less and less, feeling like you're protected? Like, share, subscribe.